All right, what is the point of analyzing music and what does that mean anyway? Now, when we're first learning a piece, we're probably most concerned about learning the actual notes given to us by the composer, most likely in the form of a score. And we're given instructions about what pitches to play, when to play them, the dynamics, tempo, all of that. So why bother and take extra steps to analyze the score further? And how do we even go about doing that? For me, analyzing a piece of music has a lot to do with gaining clarity and insight into the music beyond certain impressions I have of it while practicing it or listening to it, either through a recording or someone else's performance. Also, there are so many different ways in which we can analyze a piece, so let's actually start by talking about those. We can first start off by identifying the genre or form. Say, for example, you're learning a Chopin mazurka. This is Opus 59 number one, one of my favorite mazurkas. Knowing that it's a mazurka, we can take note of a few things. First of all, it's in triple meter. We know that it's a dance form coming from the Polish tradition, that it has a certain tempo and lilting quality, and a lot of times there's an emphasis on the second and third beats. Knowing all of these can influence the way that you carry on with the piece with phrasing, pacing, and tempo. Of course, when we look at the score, we have all kinds of markings there for us, including phrase marks, those lines above the notes that tell us how the melodies and phrases are organized. But if we further look at the direction of these lines, we can gather some more clues in terms of the inflection of these lines. Here we can observe how there are phrases in dialogue with each other. First, we have one going downwards, then upwards, which is sort of like a reply. And then we have another one going downwards, but starting from a higher pitch. And then a reply upwards as well. And that one is elongated with a trill, followed by an afterthought. Maybe you're like me and you want to know more about how a certain melody or phrase was constructed and how it sits on top of the underlying harmony. Knowing that Chopin's harmonic language is tonal and more traditional, we can identify the key of the piece by looking at the key signature and bookends of the piece. With that, we can know the piece is in A minor, and we can analyze this opening melody here in relation to the underlying chords. First, outlining the A minor chord which is our minor one chord, followed by a five chord, E major, and then back to A minor. Now that we're familiar with the opening section, it can serve as a crucial starting point for us, literally, for analyzing the rest of the piece for form and structure. A lot of this type of analysis involves paying attention to where melodies or sections are repeated, transformed or abandoned and in this way we can organize the piece as a whole in larger chunks. Now there are a lot of ways to do this and a lot of pre-existing forms and labels to work with. For example, letters. A, B, A is ternary form. You can pay attention to maybe the sonata allegro form which has intro, exposition, development, recapitulation, coda, that sort of thing. So there are a lot of different ways of organizing these sections with form. In the realm of harmony and music theory in general, there are a bunch of technical terms being used, which honestly can get quite overwhelming. Augmented sixth chord, enclosure, accent and non-core tones, sequence, passing tones. But at the same time, they come in handy because in general, not always, but in general, they serve as a universal language or coding for us musicians and music lovers to use amongst ourselves to communicate these ideas. You can also describe the different sections of the piece in a narrative way, such as describing the first section as having longing and nostalgic gestures, then moving into a more nonchalant and daydream-like excursion, and then here maybe a quiet prayer with a sense of purpose, and then an emotional buildup here where there's tension building while maybe searching for answers. 
or maybe describing music in other illustrative ways, such as using colors, textures, or shapes, suits you much better. So as you can see, analyzing a piece of music can mean so many different things, and what I mentioned so far in the video are things that I think can help you out, especially if you're a player or performer, because with all of these different bits and pieces of information, it'll help you form your own interpretation of a certain piece. How you'll deal with the dynamics, phrasing, pacing, articulation, all of that. And also, speaking of performing, having these different points of clarity and having a variety of them, I think really helps solidify your memorization on stage or away from stage because memorization is tricky. I think it's hard because it's such an abstract concept and it's really hard to be comfortable with the idea or it's hard to feel secure about remembering something, especially something with so many different details. And that's something that I personally have always struggled with. So I always try to find different ways, many different ways of analyzing a piece or just becoming familiar with a piece in order to feel more comfortable about memorization. How about we go for a walk? All right, I'm gonna sit down. So if you're like me and you like composing and improvising, analyzing pieces in these ways can give you new musical ideas. For example, after analyzing this particular mazurka, I was inspired to write a piece, which I'll edit so that you'll hear it in the background. And what's interesting is that lately I've been writing a lot of music that is highly repetitive, pretty jagged, minimalistic, and fast paced. But with this piece, I was in a different headspace and it allowed me to just have a change of pace, literally. And I really loved it because perhaps I, it allowed me to express something that was rather dormant as of late in terms of my music writing language and I had a lot of fun with it. One of the main ways I think of the mazurka is in this very narrative and descriptive way using, I don't know, maybe a story made up in my head. So in similar fashion when writing this particular piece, which is not a mazurka, it's, it has mazurka-like qualities, but it's certainly not a mazurka and I wasn't following any kind of form that Chopin was using. Um, but when writing this, I was also thinking of a sort of storyline um, that was drifting in and out of, of my head when I was writing the piece. So I think there's something to be said about that. And when we're inspired to create something new, I think that's always a beautiful thing. Another thing I want to add is that, of course, everyone has different ways of approaching music, different ways of understanding music, listening to music, studying music, and everyone has a different personality. For me, these things really help me create, really help me as a player and as a listener. But I understand it's not for everyone, and I think it can be a distraction if you are stuck with those details and you never end up leaving some of those analytical details behind and giving the piece the breathing room that it needs. One thing is certain though, I do think that there's value in considering all of these different options and not shy away from being too analytical because sometimes there's a stigma against that and it reminds me of this particular quote by I think E.B. White. I could be wrong. Okay, I just looked it up. It is by E.B. White. It says explaining a joke is like dissecting a frog. You understand it better, but the frog dies in the process. And I think a lot of people think that analyzing music is similar to this because, you know, you're overthinking it or you're over-examining it and you take away from something sacred about it. But I disagree. I think uh, analyzing music, there are many different ways. And that being said, it's just about paying attention to music in different ways, different ways that you prefer. Some are more technical than others, and I think we shouldn't overthink about overthinking things. But anyway, these are just some of my thoughts around analyzing music, 
I'm all for it. I think it's wonderful and that is all. By the way, I have a Patreon if you don't already know. I upload additional content there in between the videos that you see on YouTube. And if you're already supporting me there, thank you so much. I have already uploaded a formal and harmonic analysis of the mazurka that I talked about in the video, as well as the score and recording of the little waltz I wrote. That is all. I appreciate you all. Thank you so much. And I'll see you in the next video. So I asked the same question on my Instagram and here are some responses. Building on my intuitions by informing them. It's a great answer. To grow your musical vocabulary. To understand why it moves you. Thank you, Amy. <laughs> to train your ears based on the analysis. Try to understand concepts. Cuckoo. To improve one's understanding of music and build a stronger musical vocabulary. Yes. Ben Levin. It helps me connect my emotional response to music with the notes on the page. Irko. To understand how it's built, how it works, how it was created. Antonio, perhaps analyzing music helps to achieve a deeper appreciation and experience. Also, what is the point of analyzing anything in life? <laughs> I like this one, to enjoy less obvious parts of music and to dive into the composer's minds. To get inspired with more creative and innovative ideas to enhance our music playing. For sure. To unlock the mystery. To find their fingerprints in the music, new techniques, ideas, etc. To be able to copy it and yet make something new. Ooh, difficult but a short answer would be imitate, internalize, and innovate. Wow. To delay practicing. <laughs> Kim, yes. To add different perspectives and draw out alternative meanings and messages than intended. To help you better articulate why you like it. I like that as well. To learn the rules so you can break them. <laughs> yes. Thanks again. See you next time.